Did you see those words go over everybody? The boxes of words? They didn't release. So you got to see it to get it. Does everybody get that? You see it to receive it. That's why people don't receive because they can't see it. How do you receive your healing? You see it. You know, I've shared this story already, but we were out playing football after service one day, and I busted up my leg, and I went to the hospital, and they told me I couldn't walk for three months. So it was on a Sunday, Tuesday night. We had crutches. Got up to the podium, put my crutches behind me. Just got them praising and worship. We all started praying in tongues. Next thing I saw, I saw the Lord. He was on the right-hand side of me, like on a boat. So I must have been on the water. I don't know. And he's in the front of the boat, and he says, Guy, walk. And I went, cool. But I went, ah, I'm doing what I... Think, what the heck? You just told me to walk. He says, now, ask me to command you to walk. I said, Lord, command me to walk. He said, guy, I command you to walk. Ran around a church, I was healed. Put the crutches on my shoulder, came home. My wife was very happy because we just had Lissy. <laughs> but seeing is receiving. Does everybody get that? It's important because we are to be seers. Amen? You know, when you always think about what did the Lord say to all you know, the prophets? What do you see? That means God's already released it. Now he wants you to catch it. To see it. Because when you see it, you receive it. See, faith comes by hearing, but what does hearing do? It paints a what? Picture. Oh, glory. I'm not even, I'm not even there. This is a release of the Spirit to bring us to another level. Because we must be considering, you must consider yourself as a seer. How do you see things? Amen. We are, we are, we are, again, we are entering an, another, even though the world is all messed up, we're not. <laughs> Hello. Man, you go all over the place, people are messed up. They're wearing masks and gloves and. Some of them are wearing them on their foreheads, you know. People don't understand that. You know, it's, it's a shame. I, we, I went to do a, a, a job with a woman and a uh, sweet lady. The first thing she asked me, she had to answer the door with a mask on. I, she was like, you vaccinated? I said, heck no. I'm not vaccinated. And she looked at me and she's like, Okay, come on in. <laughs> so I went in there and sweet woman. And uh, she finally took her mask off. <laughs> I didn't have to say a word. And, and you know, she, here she is, an elderly woman with her husband who's got some Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. He does, he's not fully there. And... um. So I just said, I'm going to pray for you when I'm done. And she goes, well, you know what? I just found out I have cancer. I have a tumor. I've never had this. I don't know anything about it. I want, I, you know, she's been pro post after and every other you can get. I didn't want to tell her, you know, I didn't want to explain everything to her because I wasn't led to. The Lord said, just pray to that 
tumor in her chest and commanded to whether to die. I didn't want to tell her that it was probably a side effect of the vaccine because many people are getting tumors and cancers from it. And, uh, but I prayed with her. She was so happy. She was just sweet, pleasant woman. She goes, I'm going to get you a honey-do list. <laughs> I, call, I said, because I, 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 I said to her, I said, just get me a, a punch-out list, and you know, we'll make arrangements, and I'll come back and do all the other stuff you want. She goes, no, it's a honey-do list. I said, okay, honey-do list. But, you know, again, sweet people are messed up. Good people are messed up. And one of the reasons is because they don't know who they are. They don't know who they are. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, brethren, be, be, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, Wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. In other words, we're to surrender our spirit, soul, body, will, desires, and our possessions every day to the Lord. Because you and I don't own nothing. We're stewards. Amen? Verse 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of my, your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Again, do not... No conforming to the world's way of thinking. That's what he's trying to tell us. Stop conforming to the world's way of thinking. But step out and away from this dimensional entanglement by resetting, training, refreshing, and renewing your train of thought. You know, think about this. Everybody's heard that word, train of thought. What is this? Thoughts that are trained. Amen? Train of thought. That's thoughts that are trained. Why? Because you're God, the Holy Spirit is training you. God is training you to think correctly according to the way he thinks. Your train of thoughts. And this will allow you to reconnect to the eternal dimension. In the parallel universe with Christ. Now. Jesus gave us a powerful prayer. He said pray thy kingdom come and thy will be done. You know. He. he, he Jesus. Is the king of king. Lord of lords of the, of the kingdom. Amen. And that kingdom. Is in its own location. But, it, but it's parallel with this universe. It's a parallel universe. It's, everything is parallel. When people go to heaven and they come back, what do they see? A lot of stuff that's the same as here. Except for they are eternal beings. Things are different. It's an eternal realm. But at one time, that universe, that universal kingdom was united. Adam lived in a dimension of both kingdoms, in the same of both in both dimensions in the same realm, of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of the physical, but it was one. He was a triune being, just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But he was more spirit. Again, I've shared this before that Adam was an eternal uh, eternal being. He didn't need blood. He wasn't going to trip in the garden and bleed to death. That's for sure. Amen. The presence of God had to be replaced in Adam with blood. Because God doesn't dwell with what? Sin. Amen. So that's why the life of the flesh is in the blood. That's why Jesus came to reset things straight. So you got to think about something here. I'm getting way ahead of myself. But I can't help myself. Adam was the true genetic gene of God. Amen? After the fall, he became generic. 
Come on, think about this. From genetic to generic. Everyone born in the world is generic. There's no true genetic. Colossians chapter 2. <laughs> I'm going to leave you hanging there for a minute. <laughs> Colossians chapter 2. Genetic to generic. In verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it for I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea and for, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attending to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, on whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, lest any should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. See, he was warning us. He said, man, don't want people to deceive you with the words. You know, why? Because you have been taught the truth. Beware of the demonic influence that will cheat you or rob you from renewing your train of thoughts according to the mind of the Creator. To avoid the traps of the basic principles of the world's way of thinking. And lose your identity in Christ, which is with authority, power, and dominion. Remember, the enemy's always trying to, what's the first thing he comes after? Your identity. Amen? He comes to steal your identity. If he can manipulate your identity or compromise your identity, you begin to diminish in authority and power and dominion. And what begins to happen in this, you begin to fall back into the basic principles according to the world's way of thinking. And we're not to be going back to that. We're to be going forward. Now, he's talking to people that are now genetic, not generic. Does everybody get it? That's what Jesus paid the price for. We have been restored as a new creation in Christ is the original genetic offsprings of God Almighty. We are no longer generic. Has everybody got it? But there are out there who, pre who are still generic thinking that they're genetic, but they're really not. 2 Corinthians 11. Second Corinthians 11, verse 1. Everybody okay? Oh, that you would bear with me a little folly. And indeed you do bear with me. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow as a serpent deceived Eve, by his craftiness, so your minds or your thoughts may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, 
or if you receive a different spirit or individual which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. For I consider that I am not at all inferior to the most eminent apostles. Even though I am untrained in speech, yet I am not in knowledge. But we have been thoroughly manifested among you in all things. He's talking about the simplicity in Christ. How does the simplicity of Christ maintain? It's simple. It's fellowship in the Spirit. It's simplicity of Christ. In other words, not allowing all kinds of foolishness and entanglements, traditions, rituals, amen, to enslave you. In a relationship of Christ, in the simplicity of Christ, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Everybody wants to be free. The world wants to be free. They're crying out for freedom. The problem is they don't know how to get free. Because the only way to be free is to have the presence of God in your life. In every area. Amen? Ephesians 4, in verse 17. So you got to remember that your old man is generic. Amen? Your new creation is an offspring of the true genetic gene of God. Verse 17, let's speak it. This I say therefore in testifying the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind or their what? Thoughts. Having their understanding what? Dark and why? Because they're generic. Being alienated from the life of God. Why? Because they're generic. They're not original. Because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their hearts. Who being past feeling they have given themselves over to lewdness. To work all uncleanness with greediness. Because they're what? Generic. But you have not so learned Christ. The simplicity. If indeed you had heard him. And have been taught by him. As the truth is in Jesus that you put off. Concerning your former conduct, the old man, which what? Grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be what? Renewed, refreshed, reconnected in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the what? New man, the new genetic offspring, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil that promotes generic. Many people have gone from genetic to generic. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands what is good that he may have something to give him who is in need. And let no corruptible word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Again, put off the old man and be renewed as a creation in Christ in the spirit of your thoughts, your mind. To have the ability to deny yourself, because without that, you can't. To have the ability to deny yourself and put the new creation man reborn with the DNA genetic offspring of God Almighty first. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4, in verse 16. Remember, the devil loves to come and steal your identity. The word says, as a man thinks, so he is. The problem is, is there's a lot of generic thinking that they're right with God and they're not. They're not genetic. Verse 16. Therefore we do not what? Lose heart even though our outward man is perishing. 
Yet the inward man, the new creation, the genetic offspring, is being renewed day by day. How's he being renewed day by day? Here's the next verse. By light afflictions, <laughs> which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Listen, your challenges are changing you. Amen? Amen. Well, we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Again, we're looking at the things that are not seen. He's saying, look, we're not looking at things physical. We're looking at what God is revealing to us. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are e what? Eternal. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The inward man is being renewed. The new creation is, is becoming renewed every day as you cooperate with the Spirit of Christ through all the afflictions of change to dismantle the old man and its generic influence and promote the new man. See, challenges cause you to deny yourself. The more you deny yourself, the more the new man has takeover. Amen? Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Everybody here is know, knows a bunch of generics. <laughs> Colossians 2.16. Let's speak it. Let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding the festival or new moon or Sabbaths which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, which is what? Generic. The fleshly mind is what? Generic. Amen. And not holding fast to the head, from which all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why as though living in the world do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and the doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh, because those things promote generic. It's not true genetic offspring of God Almighty. Amen? This is a generic man of the old pretending to be a new man. They always like to pretend to be a new person. You know, think about how many times we said, I'm going to change. We tried to be a new creation, but we couldn't. We were generic. Until the power of Christ came in to begin to start. See, but there must be a yielding process first. There must be a process of cooperation. There's a process of cooperation in everything. Without the process of cooperation, things can't be done. Because God's plan is God's will. And in the grace of God's plan, which we call grace, it's his plan. It's his plan to escape sickness, diseases, it's a plan to escape hell, to escape uh, torment, to escape everything. In other words, to escape that means we're going to go through it, but we're not going to stay there. Why? Because going through it is the opportunity to train to change. Amen? To dismantle the old, to destroy the generic, and to put on the new in everything we do. Hallelujah. You know, people get really frustrated when they're going through stuff. You know what happens? They stay there. 
They stay there. They grumble and complain. That changed them in that place. They'll stay in that valley. Even when God sends a ladder and a helicopter and everything else, they'll stay there. They'll miss the, they'll miss the opportunity to escape. Because what happens is the enemy brings you to you. And you're so caught up in yourself, you, can't, you, you miss the opportunity. That's how he operates. And then he, then he keeps you generic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 11, 12. You know, there's a very powerful scripture. It says you must work out your own salvation. Nobody else can work it out for you. Amen? The Holy Spirit gives us all the abilities, guides us, teaches us, gives us the weapons, brings things to remembrance. If there is true simplicity of cooperation in the Spirit with Christ. 2 Corinthians 11, 12, let's speak it together. But what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. Hello, these are generics. Paul says, I'm going to cut them off, man. For such as false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms into an angel of light who is generic now. He was genetic. But he's generic now. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Wow. Of course, he says, I say again, let no one think me a fool. If anyone wise, let him receive me as a fool, that I also may boast a little. Hallelujah. What was Paul doing? Cutting off the generics. Those with fake authority and power. But that's what he was using to cut them off with. His genetic authority and power of the true genetic offspring by the renewing of the new to overcome the old Genesis chapter 1. Hallelujah. When you read Genesis, the book of Genesis is the book of genes. It's a generic book. What does it talk about? Everything God created. It's all about the beginning of things, or restoring of things, or renewing of things. In Genesis chapter 1, it says what? Verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the what? The earth. Parallel universe. It says the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. It was out without form and void. In other words, it was corrupt. It was corrupt. In other words, the parallel universe where Christ is as overseer of all things. It says the earth basically was cursed and void because of the Lucifer's corruption on the earth at that time. In verse 3. Then the Lord said, let there be light. And there was light. When the word says, let there be, it means restore. Restore. Because, the, well, remember, the earth was, when Lucifer and, and the angels and so forth, when Lucifer was a praise and worship leader and so forth in the universe, and the earth was filled with angels and so forth. It was the mountain of God to the universe. It was the center of all things. And then it was corrupt, and God shut it down. Let there be light is to restore with God gene or genetic. Because why? It became corrupt. Or the genetic of all life, seed and planets, animals, water, everything. God was going to restore the God gene that was corrupt. 
in verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Why? Because they were God's gene, the genetic gene, the offspring, the true. So God was restoring. Now you're seeing everything. Remember, the Lord brought animals to Adam. When God created the animals, he said, bring them to Adam. Why? Because he was his genetic offspring. He said, Adam, you name them all. Go ahead. I give you dominion. The earth is yours, Adam. Oh, Lucifer is going to serve you as a gardener in, your, in, the, in, in the garden. He's going to serve you as a gardener and so are the fallen angels. They're going to serve you. You have dominion over them. Over the air, that means the, the heavenlies. Adam, I'm giving you, you're my offspring. You're my genetic offspring. What you say goes. Name the animals. Does everybody get this? Man, do you understand what Jesus did for me and you? Man, we don't grab it all, you know. We have a hard time with it because we're bombarded with self. We're slapping down generic every day. We're bombarded with the world's influence. And the, and the airwaves that are always constantly bombarding our thoughts and influencing our thoughts. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> True genetic offspring. And then when Adam blew it, he became generic. Why? Because the leader of the generic race, <laughs> Lucifer, planted a generic. He corrupted it. In Genesis 3, verse 1, more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the servant, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So she knew, didn't she? You can't touch it, you can't eat it. You can't partake of it, or you're going to die. Then, of course, a serpent said to the woman, you ain't going to die. You've been lied to. <laughs> For God knows that in the day you eat, your eyes will be open, and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then their eyes of both of them were open, although they were closed. And they knew that they were naked, why became self. And they sewed fig leaves together, made themselves coverings. Again, the generic leader deceived the genetic offspring and all humanity became generic. All humanity. Adam and Eve lived in the parallel dimension with God. He allowed them to share it with them. And then Adam, when he, and of course, you know, then when Adam and Eve blew it, they, they lost their true generic offspring is God, from God. Amen? Acts 17. Acts 17, 22, Then Paul stood in the midst of Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very deceived, very religious. For I was passing through and concerning all the objects of your worship, I even found an altar which said, inscribed, to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I'm going to proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, 
does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings, so that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grow for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his what? Offspring. Offspring. Therefore, now you got to remember, Paul was born again, amen? Spirit-filled. He's got the true genetic offspring. And he's explaining it to these guys because they're generic. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature, now he's expressing and connecting that the new genetic gene of God, new creation, carries a divine nature. Is so we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art and men's devising. Truly these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this by, to all by raising him from the dead. Wow. So the true genetic offspring is with a divine nature by the God gene, released, released to each and every one that's born again of the Spirit. Now Paul was releasing a prophetic insight to the generics. Does everybody get that? That they may become the true offspring. So it's when, when people say, you know, Salvation. Salvation is the beginning. Amen. That's why the Bible says work out your own salvation. Working it out. Why? Because your, your memory says you're being renewed day by day. There's a, there's a constant transference every single day. We're being transferred more and more into his image and likeness. And that generic is becoming diminished, 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 diminished. And the genetic offspring with the divine nature is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. If we're cooperating. Hallelujah. Galatians 2. Galatians 2 verse 1. Then after 14 years I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas. And also took Titus with me. And I went up by revelation. And communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. But privately to those who were of reputation lest any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. And this occurred because of the false brethren, the generics, secretly brought in who came in by stealth to spy out our freedom or our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into what? Bondage. To whom we did not yield submission, even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. <laughs> but from those who seem to be something, whatever they were, <laughs> it makes no difference to me. God shows personal favoritism to no man. For those who seem to be something added nothing to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we see that many came in this stealth. They were generic. Amen. They were not the true offspring. In Titus chapter 3. Titus 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Remind them to be subject to rulers. And the authorities to obey. To be ready for every good work. To speak evil of no one. To be peaceful, gentle. Showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness of the love of God, our Savior toward man, appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us, 
through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly. Hello, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the device of man after the first and second admonishment. Admonishing, knowing that such a person is what? Warped and sinning, being self-condemned. Why? Because they're what? Generic. They're not genuine. They're generic. And it says here, it must be the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. That regeneration doesn't stop. The only time it stops is when you stop. When you stop cooperating, it stops. And that's when the enemy loves to attack. And I'm going to close at 1 John 3. Remember, as a true offspring, all the benefits are available for me and you. Everything is available. In verse 1, 1 John Chapter 3. Everybody there? First John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be what? Like him. Why? Because we carry the God gene. Amen? For we shall see him as he is. And in everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins is not, has neither seen him nor known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, and he who is just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Wow. So there's the manifestation. Remember Jesus rebuked the Pharisees and Sadducees. And he said to them, you are the father, your father, the devil. Why? Because they were generic. Does everybody get that? They were generic. They were not the true offspring. The true gene genetic seed could only come through Jesus. Why? Because he came to what? Restore everything. Amen? That was a great price he brought for me and you. Now, as children need to step in and begin to believe and accept all the promises of God and walk in the divine nature of who we are in Christ. Amen? We want to get everybody out of the generic into the true genetic line of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. But the enemy's got all kinds of false religions out there. They got all kinds of stuff, rituals, you know. They got all things that, like, he's, Jesus, like the word said about self-imposed religion. But it's all generic. They have no, no power over the flesh. We are entering a new arena. Things are going to shake more because we're entering a, 
unshakable kingdom. <laughs> Those are the true offspring. The generic will not be shaken off. But if you're, I mean, if your generic is still ruling, you will be shaken off. Amen. Only the genetic will hold strong. Praise God. Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed of who we are in you and who you are in us. We thank you for the price Jesus paid that we may all fall in the fullness as the true offsprings of Christ Jesus and the genetic gene of God with walking in a divine nature so the world may see you and not us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.